Good morning, good morning, bitch. We're road to Ruta.com with your morning horn of Z's, your sip of chaga coffee. I'm wearing my new favorite shirt. Check it out. Tyler Durden shirt. <laughs> Zero Hedge are selling these merchandise. They have a merchandise section. I love this thing. It's a hoodie. Um, but I wore it yesterday when uh, I was talking to my friend Andy Shackman, and we were diving behind the curtain of the U.S. Mint to find out what's really going on. Um, what they're telling us is nothing, actually. They're not telling us why they're only making 20, running the uh, Silver Eagle machines at, at a minimum of 25%, um, probably more like 10 or 15% because they claim to have greatly expanded the Silver Eagle production capabilities. And yet they can't make them to uh, live up to the law, which is they have to provide them in quantities in order to meet demand. Now, they did post that, at least they posted Friday, that they had made uh, 850000 more um, the week prior. But, you know, we, we can't trust anything coming out of the mint because they lie. Um, and that's really unfortunate because I, I was a big fan of the, the U.S. Mint. Uh, I, I, for a long time, I said, this is the best mint in the world. They make the most uh, beautiful coins. Uh, back in 2011, 2012, they're making 47, 48 million Silver Eagles. They're expanding. Everything's great. And voila, something happened. Uh, so Andy and I talk about that. Go check that out. It's on YouTube. It's for free. It's called Behind the Silver Eagle Conspiracy at the U.S. Mint. Is the U.S. Mint stockpiling Silver Eagles? <clears throat> I think that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, gold Eagles as well, as well as making other forms of gold and silver coinage for the new system, which is coming. Um, go check that out. It's a really good discussion with uh, one of my best friends, Andy Sheckman. And if you want to get some silver, start with your local guys. you got to make relationships in your area. Go to your local dealer. Say, hey, my name's Joe Schmo. I need to, to strike up a relationship with you because I want to buy and sell silver from you. And they'll say, yeah, that's great. But also tell them, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a couple guys in the area, so I want to get someone I trust who'll give me the best price. So there you go. And you're off and running. Now, if you don't have anybody local or you don't want to fight for the best price, give Andy Sheckman at Miles Franklin an, an email. Send him an email at info at milesfranklin.com, and they'll send you what they got in inventory. I always recommend get what he's got in inventory. You don't want to be waiting more than a couple weeks. If it's if he says it's coming in next week, I trust Andy. He'll get it to you. Andy won't have, when the system shuts down, down Andy's not going to be able to control what's going on. Uh, most dealers will go out of business. Most dealers will go out of business. If the banks collapse, all dealers will go out of business. And you'll be sitting there with your stash of uh, silver eagles and, and silver and hopefully uh, some of the good cryptos like, obviously, uh, Theta. If if you don't know anything about cryptos, get yourself some Theta. It's the best one, by far, by far. It's going to be the biggest. Imagine Amazon, Netflix, and Google running a their own cryptocurrencies off the Theta blockchain. That's coming in December, by the way. Um, anyway, go check that out. What I want to talk today about is um, manipulation, and not just silver. Although silver is manipulated, obviously everybody knows it. How do they do it? Futures and options. I estimate there's about 500 billion, 500 billion um, derivative forms of silver trading every year. 500 billion. Remember, in the history of mankind, there's only 50 billion that's ever, 50 to 60 that's ever been mined. So 500 billion is a hell of a lot. 120 billion, or it used to be 120, it's probably about 100 now and dropping on the comics is traded every year. And you might wonder, you know, how could they do this? How can they trade derivatives back and forth? And how is that allowed? It's very simple. And the, the head of, ex-head of the CFTC told us what derivatives are for. They are for controlling price. He said it when he was talking about, this is Chris Giancarlo, the, the ex-head of the CFTC, said we have to put derivatives on cryptocurrencies, otherwise the price would just keep rising. And a rising price doesn't mean, you know, the, the, uh, whatever is, is uh, the underlying asset is going up in value. What's happening is people losing faith in what it's traded in, which is the U.S. dollar. Would you have, rather have a U.S. dollar 
or a, a silver eagle that says a dollar on it. Theoretically, according to the government, they're both worth one dollar, although the piece of paper is a Federal Reserve note. But look what silver's done compared to the dollar. The dollar's buying you, a, you know, how much to buy a cup of coffee these days? It used to be like a penny to buy a cup of coffee 100 years ago. Now it's, who knows, go to Starbucks, what, four bucks? The insanity moves on. Um, but I just, what I want to emphasize today is it's not just silver and gold that are rigged. Every single exchange on the planet is rigged with computers and derivatives. I'm going to get to you know who did it, how they did it, and, and what's going on. But the biggest one lately is oil. Well, you don't... Biden is, is unleashing just basically getting rid of all the SPRs, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. This was our, you know, it's our uh, in case of emergency type of oil. Now, the SPRs, they lie about how much is in there anyway. We don't know how much is in there, truthfully. I know there's a hell of a lot in the ground up on, at Gull Island in Alaska, like 100 years worth of oil that they capped back in the 60s. But the reality is they don't need to release any oil from the SPR to rig the price of, of oil down. Why? Look, at, Biden says, oh, my God, we are. Last week, Biden ordered another SPR sale of 15 million barrels. 15 million barrels of oil in December. And the price of oil dropped. 15 million barrels. Now, keep that number in your mind. For a whole month, he's going to release 15 million barrels. Let's see what type of derivatives trade every day. And remember, it's the derivatives that set the price, not the amount of physical oil in the market. Real world example of energy derivatives. Energy derivatives marketplace is large and liquid, which means infinity. You can make infinity derivatives. With the CME alone handling over 18 million contracts per day, some of the most popular types of energy derivatives are those related to crude oil. For example, NYMEX WTI light sweet crude oil futures trade nearly 1.2 million contracts per day. Remember, Biden is releasing how much? 15 million barrels? According to the CME, each contract representing 1,000 barrels of oil. So every single day, 1.2 billion barrels are traded and and the the market the quote market is saying oh my god biden's gonna release 15 million barrels in december we better we better dive the price no 99 percent of those trades are derivative trades run out of the bullion banks but mainly the exchange stabilization fund the exchange stabilization fund is an entity set up by the u.s government to rig markets they got its authority from the 1934 Gold Act. Gold Act. They can trade a trillion barrels. They can dump a trillion barrels of oil on the market today, drive the price to negative forty dollars, which they did. And you don't have to spend any of our oil out of the SPRs. Is Biden moving oil out of the SPRs? I doubt it. If you don't need to, why would you? Sure, you can talk about it. He's talking about doing it in December. Now wait a minute, Joe. December's after the election. After the election, he's going to drop all that. Oh, we better rebuild. You know, after the election, if the Democrats lose, they want hyperinflation to say it's all the Republicans' fault. It's just two sides of the same goddamn coin. So when you look at the price of crude oil, remember, this isn't barrels of oil being traded every day. This is 1.2 billion barrels of fake oil being traded every day on one exchange in America. 1.2 billion. This is why the Saudis came out and said, this thing's all rigged on the derivative market. The Saudis that you know, supposedly have the most oil in the world and, and control OPEC. Well, if they, if they can control OPEC, what, they, how many people do they have? How much derivatives they have do they have in the derivative market? That's what controls the price of everything. And oh, by the way, the uh, Exchange Stabilization Fund does not have to declare derivatives. They do have to declare other things that, that they profit or loss from, and usually it's been a profit, trust me. But they don't have to declare de derivatives because derivatives were, the, the current form of derivatives really started in the early 1970s with the computer programs written by Alan Greenspan and carried on by a guy named Stephen Duvaux. I'll get to that in a second. 
But so when Biden says, oh, we're going to unleash SPRs, it doesn't mean anything. 15 million barrels in a market in a whole month <laughs> in a market that trades 1.2 billion per day doesn't mean squat diddly. It's all in the control of the computer programs and the derivatives. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to show you. Those of you who are, have been on the road to Ruta for a while understand what the road to Ruta theory is. By the way, if you go to roadtoruta.com, I explain it. And right at the top, the top two videos, Secrets of the Fed, and then Golden Oldies to the Crypto Future. Watch those two videos and you'll get what's going on behind the scenes because it's an amazing thing that's happening. So the Federal Reserve on uh, January 1st, 2007, I was on the website uh, December 31st, the day before and January 1st. I don't know why. I was on the website, looking through their website, and I was on this economic education section on January 1st, 2007. They posted a brand new page on their website, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. See up there on the left side. It had three documents. The first one was this comic book, Wish, Inches, and Rainbows. And it had a big red exclamation, like double the font size, red exclamation point after it. The next document was something called The Road to Ruta, A Teacher's Guide. So the teacher's guide also had a big red exclamation behind it. And it just looked really weird. And the third thing they posted was something called Banking Basics. Banking Basics. Now they all have their own um, page on the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston uh, website, but they're all still there. And all this information is still there. But they were on the day... They were posted with big red exclamation points. Just the strangest thing you ever saw in your life. And then I took a good year to figure out what they were really saying. And it has to do with going back to a gold standard, believe it or not. The Federal Reserve Bank of Boston has never released another comic book. That This was their first one they released. Originally, they released in 1981 when we were thinking about going back to a gold standard. Because this comic book's all about going back to a gold standard. The, the need for scarcity in money. Yes, coming from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. So that's kind of where it all comes. And the reason I'm bringing this up is in this Wishes and Rainbows comic book where Ruta goes into the Grand Canyon and finds these caves of gold. Watch the video. You'll get a better understanding. One of the ways she was able to delay going back to a gold standard was this. These black tears. Black tears. Now, these black tears... She plants in the ground and creates new colored flowers, all this. Stuff. Yes, this is coming from the Fed Boston. And there's a little bit of reading into this that needs to be done. But if you read the teacher's guide, it doesn't take that much to say, oh, my God, they're really talking about a gold standard and the need for a gold standard in the United States of America. So the black tears related to the petrodollar. Many people have heard about the petrodollar, but they have no idea what it is. The petrodollar was set up by Kissinger and Greenspan back in the early 70s where we went over to Saudi Arabia and said, all right, you sell all your uh, oil for uh, U.S. dollars, thus supporting the dollars, and we'll make everybody in the world use U.S. dollars, and then you reinvest it into American stocks to bring up the stock market, and we'll protect you with military arms and all that. All that has now fallen by the wayside. The main reason is they don't need it anymore. We don't need every country in the world to have U.S. dollars to buy oil anymore. It just doesn't matter. Why? Because of this. Because of the derivatives. Why do you need all this oil to be, to be dealt with in dollars when you can just create derivatives to rig the price? And that's what we've done. So that's when the petrodollar ended, probably mid-1990s the petrodollar ended. And that's when uh, certain people got within... You know, it was after Greens or Greenspan was it was like the heart of his reign. He came in to the Fed with his computer programs in 1987, crashed the market in the crash of 87, two months after he got in, trying to destroy the system and go back to gold standard. Didn't work. And then he said, well, I'll just inflate the shit out of everything and blow this bubble sky high until it pops, which he did until 2006 when he left the Fed. Um, so that's what he did. Uh, he was the best computer programmer in, in the world, if you didn't know. By the way, he's also the only spokesman for Apple Computer up to that point in time. It was just Steve Jobs and Alan Greenspan talking. Check out this this uh, commercial from 1985. People in high places are always asking me, Alan, where does the money go? If you wonder the same thing, 
I suggest an Apple to see an Apple modem. Then you can call up your bank and see how much money you have. You can even pay off your bills automatically. If you have any money left over, congratulations. You're doing better than the government is. The Apple to see. There's no telling how far it can take you. Wow. <laughs> so, remember, in 1985, Greenspan had been programming computers for 20 years. He started in the mid-1960s with his best friend, John Kimeny. John Kimeny is the guy who invented basic computing, one of the first shareable computer languages. And then Alan Greenspan uh, invented the banking computer system. Blamed himself for Y2K. He's the guy who programmed only two digits. Not just him, that there were others. But remember what his position was. Alan Greenspan's mentor was Arthur Burns, the head of the Federal Reserve System. And then uh, it was Ford that put him as the head of the CEA, Council of Economic Advisors, tasking him with, one, getting inflation in line, and two, fixing the Social Security problem. That, and that was the whole reason... Arthur Burns went crazy with the money. Arthur Burns always wanted to go back to a gold standard. And then Paul Volcker screwed up their plans. Paul Volcker said, oh, I'm going to come in with uh, huge interest rates, destroy the economy for three years, and rig the price of gold lower just to get back to delay the inevitable. And then Greenspan gets in after Volcker and says, screw that. We're, we're open up the spigots um, all in a, in a... Actually, Ruta wrote in the sand what was going on in the original comic book. She wrote an economic formula called On the Road to the Golden Age. Look it up, 1960s. On the Road to the Golden Age was a way to get back to a gold standard when you're off the gold standard. And the best way to do it is print as much money as possible, soaking up all the benefits, build your roads, your houses, your bridges, and then to just pop the bubble, destroy the system, requiring everybody to go back to gold and silver as money. This was before cryptos, but... Yeah, it's hard to see how the United States would go to a crypto standard. Remember, there's going to be no deciders. There will be no deciders on what, no, the central banks are not going to be able to crash the system and, and say, okay, we're going to put the CBDCs in there. No, they'll be, you know, lucky to survive this, truthfully. There'll be no IMF. There's going to be no World Bank. There'll be no World Economic Forum. There'll be no Federal Reserve System. What, and then what does the United States have? We have something on the books we used as money. We didn't use it well, but we used it. Gold and silver as money. Now, gold and silver works as money as long as you don't mess with it. And it's not backed by anything. It is gold and silver coin as money. And we have the technology now to put little identifiers on the bottom of coins so that you know whose coin is what. And you can hold your coin at a... It won't be a bank because the banks will be gone. So at a, a post office, shall we say, that has the, the security already. You ever wonder why they put up all those bulletproof glass things around U.S. post offices? The plan was always to go back to a monetary system, at least in America, run by the people. And then have the government help out with using post offices as banks because the banks will be gone. So all this is happening. If you don't believe me, go to this. Go to the third thing they posted that day, Banking Basics. Now, it didn't have a red exclamation point after it, but it did have this. Page 17. What is that? What is, I think it's Ruta, a different version of Ruta. What is Ruta doing at this bank? Cashing in or collecting gold coins. There's 19 gold coins for a stack of bills. And it has, by the way, a chart for the price of gold in the back. Because you're going to have to have that. You're going to have to have, if, as long as fiat money is still circulating, then it's going to matter what, how much fiat money would buy an ounce of gold. By then, it's probably twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars an ounce, even though there's massive amounts of gold. And silver, phew, silver, you write your own ticket. It, the silver gold ex exchange rate right now, the, the ratio is close to 90 to 1. 99.8% of the time in the last 50 years, when it's been over 85 to 1, 99.8% of the time, it's been better to hold silver than gold. Silver's going to move massively compared to gold. But remember, right now, they're both rigged with the computer programs that Greenspan wrote. And this guy, Stephen DeVoe. This is Stephen DeVoe. You might say, well, who's Stephen DeVoe? If you go to the Road to Ruta comic books, Wishes and Rainbows, 
You go right to the top. Who, who, who wrote this? A woman named Deborah Carpenter Beck wrote it. It was adapted by Stephen Duveau right there. Adapted, made into a comic book. Deborah Carpenter Beck wrote a short story for the, uh, the Ledger, it was called. It was a Fed Boston, uh, like a monthly magazine back in the late 70s. And Stephen Duveau turned it into this comic book with a teacher's guide. Who was Stephen Duveau? He, he was a computer expert. He was a kid back in the 70s. But he was a computer expert. And there weren't many computer experts. And he was put in charge of rigging markets and teaching the bankers how to rig markets with computer programs and run the whole thing. And then in the late, so he worked for the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. And then out of the blue in the late 80s, he kind of disappeared for a while. He went basically to put uh, integrate systems into the CNC machines at IBM, which is like nuclear power plants and stuff like that, to put back doors in for the U.S. And then... Out of the blue, he's all of a sudden on the scene as the world's best project management lecturer. He wrote a book, best-selling book in project management, and now he's old. Here he is, kind of crazy looking. Check him out. Hi, my name is Steve DeVoe. It is an absolute pleasure to meet you, and it's a pleasure to be doing... Oh, by the way, he was part. He was military, military intelligence too. He's got to be close to ninety now. Anyway, yeah, he he's the guy who adapted these comic books. He's a nut about hidden meanings. He loves palindromes. You know the words you you can spell frontward and backwards, or sentences you can spell frontward and backwards. Again, go to roadtoruda dot com. Watch these two videos if you're a little confused right now. It's all. It's not that complicated. When you understand that behind this is just like the Wizard of Oz. Remember Dorothy and all the, you know, the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion went to to see Oz and they pulled back a curtain. There's an old man pulling the levers. Stephen DuVoe and Alan Greenspan were the guys pulling the levers with computer programs. But now Toto has pulled the curtain back now. We all know it. Now's the end game. Now's the, the end conclusion of the On the Road to the Golden Age that that formula that Ruta wrote in the sand, the end conclusion is print money to infinity and then destroy the system. Pop the bubble. So I hope this kind of makes sense. If it doesn't, go to roadruta.com, watch these two videos, and everything will make sense. Check out the Jenny Moonstone video also on the website. Lots of stuff on the website. Mainly sign up, put your name and email address on the left side to get updates on what's going on. And then if you want, you can subscribe to the private road at roadtoruda.com, and just hit subscribe today, and we are sending out this uh, Ruta Lives coin, the coolest coin ever, hand-painted heart, and check out how it's made. This is Bix. I'll talk to you guys.